Hey everyone, I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scottsy Business, and today we're going to be talking about why I believe most people are not going to be rich and why I believe there is a, a simple, easy way to become rich if you do it right the first time. The problem is most people want to be rich in a very short period of time. I know I've talked about this before. Uh, with my uh, trying to get rich quick mentality or, you know, trying to get rich will likely lead you to be poor. And specifically, those are the people that they're targeting typically with their advertising and marketing. But for doing it right the first time in finance, I want to specifically talk about my approach and what I see happening a lot in crypto, in stocks, investing in general, and the way people approach finance, uh, which is always very, very concerning to me. But um, I'd like to share my take. And uh, as always, this is not financial advice. This is more so financial entertainment, if you will. But just before we dive into all that great stuff, a quick word from my sponsor. A big thank you and shout out to my sponsor, Cake Wallet, which is an open source, non-custodial Bitcoin and Monero wallet that also has a built-in exchange. It's available on iOS and Android. All right, thanks to my sponsor. So first, I want to talk about what I see in the crypto space, what I think people are doing wrong. Because if you want to get rich the first time, aka you don't want to lose all of your money uh, and then start at zero and start again, which is what I think is going to happen to most people, right? They come into the crypto space, they come into stocks at least in the last two years or so, or or more so in the last two years. Uh, we're seeing this a lot more where people are coming in with crazy expectations and they're going to get wrecked. Whether they're investing in pump and dumps, rug pulls, uh, crazy projects that are unsustainable, bad projects, all these kinds of things. People are coming in with ridiculous expectations. They want shortcuts. They want the secrets and, uh, and they end up getting wrecked. They lose all their money. They try day trading. They lose most of their money that way, whatever it happens to be, right? People want to either get a million dollars in the next six months to a year or zero. Although most people come in believing or, or they're so enticed by the hope that they could get a million dollars in a short period of time that they're willing to just risk it all. Um, it's like the lottery, but to a smaller degree, right? Um, you're going to win a lot less, but there's also a lot less participants. And, um, unfortunately you have to invest significantly more to actually make that money. Um, especially if you're going in thinking that you're going to turn a hundred dollars into a hundred thousand dollars because you're going to find some insane coin that is just going to do ridiculous gains. I've talked about this before. It's unlikely because you're not going to have the high conviction. Um, there's only so many millionaires in the world. So we just know that logically it's not really going to happen and it isn't happening. Um, lots and lots of different things, right? But if you come into the crypto space, and you think in the next two years, I'm going to either be rich or I'm going to be broke. I guess you have realistic expectations if you're going to be doing that kind of investing and speculative investing and more so just gambling. Um, at least you have the right expectations. And if you have the right expectations, you won't be upset or confused or whatever or shocked uh, when you lose all your money because you knew this was probably the likely scenario. Although I feel like if people understood this and internalized this, they wouldn't be willing to risk their life savings. A good example of this was recently, um, I saw a lot of people posting about how they lost everything on uh, Titan. I saw someone who invested like 23,000 or 26,000 or something like that. And they ended up with like less than $6 when it went from $60 to below zero. So again, guys, you've really got to consider this. Am I playing this game? Am I playing the wealth game, the financial game? Am I playing to win in the next 10, 15 years? Or do I want to risk everything to maybe win in the next year or two, but potentially lose everything? The problem is that uh, most people 
cannot financially or emotionally, mentally afford to lose that. I know many people who would say, yeah, I mean, if I lost all of my life savings on something, uh, I would be liable to, you know, end it right there because that is just so overwhelming for some people. They literally cannot handle that type of risk tolerance, but everyone's being sold this dream when they come into crypto investing, whatever, uh, especially lately that it's going to just change your life and it's just going to make you rich and you're going to catch the next one, the next one, you'll get the next one, the next gem, and then it'll go hundred X thousand X. It's I'm just telling you, it's not going to happen. So instead of playing that risky game, because I know there's going to be people in the comments, right? Who are going to say, oh yeah, well this cryptocurrency is going to go 10,000 X or don't you, are you really trying to miss out on 500% yield on this cryptocurrency? It's like, no, people in the stock game know this very well, right? Something above 10% yield is very risky. And uh, in crypto, it's like people are going for 100% yields minimum. Again, I've talked about all this before, but it's so important to reiterate because people are trying to win the entire game off of a bet and uh, it, they're liable to just infinitely be in these 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 cycles of losing everything or losing most, maybe even gaining ever so slightly much, but really not a lot is going on and it's because they're just following hype. Uh, they're trying to catch the next big thing and they're not really putting in the work to research or to even just put in that effort, that time, that dedication to the long play, uh, the play that they know that is much more likely to work, uh, if not nearly guaranteed based on, you know, how conservative you want to be with your investments. Obviously there's no way to predict some sort of crazy one-off event like COVID or whatever it happens to be. But if you can at least be prepared and have a plan and execute on that plan and have a good idea of where everything is going, it's not going to be stressful or, you know, take a lot of mental fortitude or, you know, be able to deal with a lot of risk, all these different things. Part of all of this is just being able to sleep at night without sh being stressed out. Um, that's a huge part of it. I mean, I am constantly pushing myself to, uh, to be more, I don't know what the exact word is trying to force myself into a sort of desperation. Desperation isn't the right word because it sounds like there could be a uh, lack of integrity applied there. But what I mean is. If you take all of your expenses, well, after you get your income for the month, you take all of your expenses, you set that aside. You're going to cover that for sure. The rest, I mean, a hundred percent goes to investing uh, and you can budget out your expenses to include Uber going out once a week or whatever. You can expense everything and budget it. You put that aside. You've got everything that you need to survive. Uh, and even maybe enjoy yourself a little bit. And then the rest, hundred percent goes to investing. I've already gone through this before where it's like, I am doing 65% of my income. Uh, I'm investing all of that 65%. The rest goes to my expenses and a little bit of, uh, my wants and such. And then that 65% will allow me to retire in the next 10 years. If my expenses do not change, however, uh, my expenses probably will change, but the 65% rule does not include appreciation. So it's only going on the basis that you're going to get 5% yield compounding interest, which is fairly doable, especially with stocks. If you're doing this with crypto staking or lending or liquidity providing, you're getting probably higher than 5% anyways. So it's going to be even easier to do depending on what you're trying to do though. Um, it will allow you to basically retire and live off that income, assuming your expenses don't change, but assuming that they also appreciate in value, it'll probably work a little bit with your expenses. Anyways, 65%, if you can save more than half of your income, uh, it, it should be very easy for you to stick to the path and then just win because slowly building up your wealth, adding to it is the least stressful way to do it because 
If you're saving up all your money, hoping to time the market, well, you're getting hit by inflation and then you try to time the market and then the market drops right after, you're devastated, right? You're losing so much money. Dollar cost averaging in though, you're only gaining or losing a little bit of money based on your previous paycheck. So it's not a big hit or a big gain, but over time, you know, for me, two years have gone by almost, not even two years yet, two years in November, and I see my account growing at an insane rate, right? From 5,000 to over $200,000 in less than two years. Uh, I always stress that because I've had people tell me that that's like not a big deal. That's not very successful. I think those people are kind of arrogant because I'm framing all of this around uh, the average person watching. Obviously, I don't expect someone with multi millions to be watching my investment videos because it doesn't really make sense. I expect regular average people to be watching my videos because either they're kind of, you know, seeing what my opinion is and learning from that, or they really don't know and they're kind of just like learning as a beginner. Whatever it happens to be, though, um, this is more for people who are trying to build their wealth up from nothing. And all the videos that I've ever created have all been kind of like this framework for how you can earn money from crypto online, how you can invest to become financially independent and uh, what you can actually do with blockchain technology. And that's kind of what I do with all my videos and this whole channel, um, teaching people how to do it right the first time. Again, I've already covered so much of this. So, I mean, if you're not a new viewer, um, this might sound a little redundant to previous videos, but again, it's just so, so important to drive this home that it's all about the correct, proper, more so the safe way to invest. People see Bitcoin as like a conservative investment now in the crypto space. Um, which leads me to believe that most of the space is not living in reality. Um, they're living in some crazy world because average, like normal investors, including most successful investors, look at Bitcoin as a fairly risky investment, but, but, uh, it's still a great investment because of inflation, because of so many things that we've talked about in the past, we know that uh, just leaving your money in fiat or only having it in like stocks, et cetera, is, is also extremely risky, probably more risky than investing in Bitcoin. Um, but you don't want to just invest in Bitcoin. You still want to be diversified. But again, doing it right the first time is, is important because it'll keep you on the track. You will be building up your gains as you go. It will be reinforcing and providing you the enthusiasm and the, um, you know, just seeing those prog that progression, those milestones being hit, it will give you the motivation to keep going and you will be, you know, you'll just be motivated by that and it'll, and it'll, it'll make it doable. Whereas at first it's very, you know, daunting to be trying to get to this million dollar goal by putting away tiny, tiny amounts of money. Um, but it's just so much more realistic than trying to bet it all on something, something outlandish. Again, people have gotten it right. I mean, a perfect example actually is pro the doge who put his entire life savings, maxed out all of his credit cards, just the craziest thing turned like $188,000 into over 2 million. But because he wasn't willing to take profits, which is a part of, you know, doing it right. You should never just always hold. You should take some profits to be able to reinvest and diversify because he was too, all of his wealth was in one single asset class and one asset in total. Uh, he got wrecked. It went from like, you know, over $2 million to under a million dollars. Still amazing gains from when he first put in. So he's probably not, you know, too sad, but, um, but that's what happens, right? When you start to get, when you're chasing these, these crazy gains, because Doge is not a safe asset. It is one of those crazy, ridiculous, speculative assets. There's really not much of a use case. You could argue it has a use case for digital cash, but it costs exponentially more than any other a uh, reasonable alternative, unless you compare it to Bitcoin, which is a silly moot point in my opinion, since it's digital gold now, not really digital cash. Anyways, though, 
uh, hopefully I'm not just rambling at this point. I hope this makes sense. Uh, when you deal with your finances, there's no reason why you should risk it in hopes to, you know, win everything in a year when you could just play it safe, do it right, do it in 10 years. In my case, I feel like I'm going to do it this year, uh, which would be within two years, but it's only because I had this goal that I was following this plan for the 10 year plan. I I'm clearly going to have to do a video where I detail the entire 10 year plan and how I came up with it and how you could do the same thing. Um, yeah, I'll have to do that. But I think having this plan is so important because when you do everything right, you will do it much faster than you thought, right? You will, uh, I mean, cause again, if people were trying to get rich in two years, uh, and then they failed because of it, it's ironic then that I might get rich in two years because I was trying to get rich in 10 years. Very ironic, but that's kind of how it goes. When you're trying to practice very good financial, uh, personal financial skills, and you're actually living that out every day, you are absolutely going to do better than you could have ever imagined. Because again, the 10 year plan is rough. It doesn't include appreciation, all these different things. Things can go wrong too, but when you're doing everything right all the time, it's very unlikely for things to go wrong. And if they're going to go wrong, they were probably going to go wrong in either circumstance. So like there was no safe way out. Like if the entire world goes into a nuclear war, well, it really doesn't matter what you invested in. So that's not an excuse to not invest. And I covered that in my previous video of why people don't invest in Bitcoin or otherwise. Um, that's silly. You should, you should always be investing, even if just to beat inflation, the key then is to do it right. And to not try to overshoot because you want to do it so quickly that you get caught up in scams and things like that. Again, I know I've already covered a lot of this in the past, so I appreciate you sticking all the way to the end of this video. If you did make sure to comment hashtag number one ham in the comments below. So I know that you saw the whole thing. Uh, I really appreciate it. And as always, Till next time, cheers.